It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's another DJ roundtable, and we have a lot of great DJs here tonight, as we usually do here on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time on Twitch. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can come over to Twitch and join the conversation here. But do me a favor. We really want the channel to grow on YouTube as well as on Twitch. So if you haven't done so already, go over to Twitch, follow us on Twitch over there, and make sure you subscribe down below on YouTube. You know, YouTube algorithm is a really funny and physical thing, and it, it really creates a lot of headaches for me as well as everyone else. So if you could do me a favor, first thing first, smash the like button, subscribe, you know, make sure you get the thumbs up. You know, that's a big thing. The subscribe the description, the bell icon, and see if you can share the video with a friend or two. And that's why I mean, you know, tell a friend or two about the show. That's what it's about. And hopefully you guys are enjoying the intro. Tell me, do you guys like the intro song and the outro song and the in, in the in and n and out of the, the show is how it is now? I'm trying to uh, make sure I do the right thing for you guys to enjoy yourselves on YouTube. If you're watching this over on Twitch, don't forget, we have a backlog or a catalog of, of lots and lots of episodes over on YouTube. We are uh, pointing toward 100 episodes total on YouTube and Twitch uh, streaming. Uh, that will be in August. We're counting down. I'm always keeping track of how many episodes. And that before that, we were on Instagram for a long time. And one of the people we had on Instagram who happens to check in every so often is Billy. Billy happens to uh, be here from the great state of Ohio, but originally he is from the northern country of Canada, but has come down to the United States and became part of the United States. And he is not only a sound tech, he's not only a musician, but he's also a DJ. And Billy, you have a few minutes to... Uh, Fill us in. And one other thing also, he happens to also have his uh, podcast as well he was going to talk about. And I see you, DJ Staples. Welcome, brother. Good to see you. Go ahead, Billy. Tell us, give fill us in a little bit. We haven't been here for a bit. Yeah, so um, I started, actually, officially started my own business now, my own DJ business. So I officially have just moved across from having other people... Um, work for other people. Um, officially started my own business. Have an LLC now, um, and yeah, that's kind of it's been crazy ride. Um, I also the podcast has been going absolutely crazy. Um, I'm on a little bit of a break right now because it's just been a little bit crazy with how many episodes I've done. So just that's been on the back burner at the moment. Um, but yeah, other than that, like it's just been a little bit crazy with DJing, working and everything else in between. And your uh, podcast is called what, sir? I know what it is, but I want to tell everyone what the podcast yeah. is called. Yeah, it's called 192. Um, so 192 is, uh, basically how, how you convert audio down to a certain file, uh, format. Um, so it's called 192 podcast. You can find it on Google, Apple um all over wherever you listen to it's on 15 different platforms uh yeah so it's it's evolving it's getting pretty crazy and pretty big and so yeah and uh, really, i will say uh real quick the 192 podcast that's my go-to to listen to when i'm on the plane traveling somewhere i've been listening to it in the plane so i download the episodes ahead of time and listen so if you've never listened to the podcast go check it out there you go from Tommy. And I, and I had the pleasure of being on an episode with Billy, and Billy's always awesome. Billy is one of the founding members of the DJ Roundtable when we were on Instagram before, uh, going back many years. And you know, switching over to uh, YouTube and Twitch has been a lot of fun. And hopefully, again, if you're if you're tuning in, you're new to the show, welcome. If you're a longtime subscriber and you enjoy the show, thank you. And as well, thank you, Billy, for coming back in here 
hopefully his schedule meshes more with the show and he can come in more often, stop by, at least say hi, because he's always welcome here. He's a great guy and a lot of great insight. Uh, Bill, one more thing also. I, I know mm -hmm. that you you said you started your own business. You're going down that path of, of ownership. Uh, mm -hmm. Congratulations to you, because I know you've worked Thank very you. hard in the DJ industry and dealing with scheduling and so forth. One really quick thing for you. Um, what has been your biggest hurdle to overcome so far as new to owning your own business? Um, honestly, is getting everything started. To be honest, it's just um. So I use a new I use this uh, newer software for booking. Um, so that's been kind of a a journey to get started. Um, so the software is called Simple. Um, and it's through a gentleman by Eric Massengale. Um, and he is on the DJ Life podcast with Rick Webb. Um, so he started a um, company called Simple. And this uh, system is more like, uh, it's pretty nice. It's just been fairly complicated to get started. Um, but overall, going back to kind of what you said, I would say it's just been just overall getting started was um a battle but i feel like now um i'm in a good spot to where i know where i've experienced before um things that i know now that when i was working for other people now i know those things and i can bring that information into the business um and know that hey i know this is the right way and this is the wrong way to do it um but i would say overall um, it's just been just getting overall started, um, just, but overall, just, I guess it helped with having the backend experience also as well prior to that as well. One so. of the things I, I feel as a business owner, and again, doesn't matter what your business is, if DJing or photo booth, or if you're doing something else, you, you have a hot dog stand on, you know, a food truck organization for your books and everything like that is very important. You need to be organized to get clients. You need to be organized to, uh, for accounting. You need to be organized for inventory. You need to be organized for a lot of things. Organization is very, very important. That's one of the things mm -hmm. that, you know, I would definitely would say is, is a key factor there. Um, so I'm going to go for the first question for the day. And uh, this one right here, it's kind of one of the things that, um, uh, I know as a business owner, again, uh, Billy being new to being a business owner, but has run many businesses and has run many DJ services and again, sound with bands and everything like that. And uh, by the way, uh, I don't know if you see it in chat or not, Billy, but uh, DJ Staples, he put up a bunch of Canadian flags of Canada in the house. So he is uh, representing because he is a former uh, Canadian as well and to move down here to the States. So he's just like you. Uh, we'll accept you. We'll accept the DJ Staples, both you guys, and have you guys down here. And I, I you know, so you guys are always welcomed. Um, but as a business owner, and this is a this is one of the things I want to ask everyone, and I, I'll go through what I do, and after I ask the questions, so you guys have an idea when I'm, I'm going with this. What are the first few things you do when someone comes to you and says, "Hey, I am looking for a DJ for whatever the event is." on such and such date, what is the first few questions you ask or what is the first questions you ask? And, you know, they, they give you the date already. So you have the date, but what is one of the first few questions you ask? And I always ask the one thing, and when I look at, when I get something from, for a wedding, for the not, of course, the date is the important part, uh, is the venue. And the reason why the venue I ask is gives me an idea what I'm getting myself into. If it's a venue I've been to before, does that venue require multiple setups? Does that venue require um, uh, certain equipment? Does that uh, venue require you know going down dark paths and stairs or whatnot, or is it easy to get uh, to get in and out of? So that's one of the first things I look at. You know, I look at you know the date we're open. You know, verify that. Okay. Then I look at the venue. Where is the venue at? Is it, you know, really close by? Is it in a um, another state? Is it far away? Is it something that, you know, if it's four hours away, well, you know, I have to fact factor that in. Do I want to say, yeah, I'm available? So it's one of the things that, you know, in the Chicago area, not a problem, but I've had people ask for D us to DJ in 
In good Michigan, you just across the border, not a problem. In Indiana, not a problem. Was Southern Wisconsin, you know, Kenosha, not a problem. Uh, we've done uh, Devonport, Iowa. That was a destination wedding. That was people we knew. We didn't have a problem with that. But we've been asked for people to, to DJ in Ohio. And I'm sorry, I too far away. I would rather give it to like Billy, uh, to Dwayne, and to uh, Kevin. I don't think Kevin's in here right now, but uh, Kevin's another DJ I know in Ohio. So again, there's there's depending on where they're at. That's why I would probably do. But I always look at where the venue is at when I when I when I see that come in. What venue are they dealing with? They don't have a venue yet. Okay, that's one of the questions we ask in the very beginning when we, if we have a meeting with them is what is the venue? Because again, once we know that, that basics part, then we can get an idea and have an intelligent conversation with the client on how we can share their vision of their wedding day. We know what they're going to do. We know, if, especially if we've been to the venue before, we know how the venue is. If I look at the venue, I look up on Google, see what the pictures are. People take pictures and they post it to Google Maps. And that's one of the tricks you guys can do out there as DJs is the pictures you take at venues, Post it to Google Maps. It leads it back to you, back to your business, and it showcases where you've been. So you take a picture of your setup, you take a picture of your speakers. If you're doing uplighting, you're doing ceremony, you're doing anything for that venue that is unique, make sure you take pictures, not only for, to show clients that you've been there and do stuff, but put it on Google Maps. It's kind of like a, you know, a flag post going back to your business. But I look at that stuff and say, okay, fine, great. What is the inside look? What do they do? Does the venue offer uplighting? Does the venue do this? The venue do that? And that's the, th the questions I have is I, I walk into a situation with a, a client and talk to them. I have some intelligence. I have some understanding of the venue. And then we can have an in intelligent conversation with them. So I'm going to go with uh, Taylor and Jordan. Um, <laughs> Jordan's been working hard all day and so is Taylor. And I know they work very hard on their sh their business. What is one of the first few questions you ask clients when they come to you and say, hey, uh, I want to hire you for whatever the event is, wedding, party, bar, whatever it is. What are the first few questions you try and ask to try and ask to try to, to facilitate um, transaction with a customer? I, I would agree with you on venue. I, uh, that is probably the... You want to turn your volume up a little bit and then now your wife is off. <laughs> You... Oh, I didn't say anything yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, my mic keeps falling, so it has to be like on this side of the table. <laughs> um, venue is probably the first thing we ask. Um, I would agree with you on that, just for obvious reasons, like you said. Um, second thing I always ask would be, you know, do you want to meet for a meeting in person? Try to get them in our office. And just turn your volume up a tad more. Can you hear me? I can hear you just... If you could turn up to a tad more for you. Your wife is beautiful. She's perfect. <laughs> it's... I have a manly voice, so. No, you don't. Contacts. You have a, you have a great voice. <laughs> but yeah, and you definitely. And then we always try to book a meeting. Have them either come to our office or if they don't want to come in, we'll do it over Zoom. But try to talk to them, you know, face to face. And once we get them in, I would say our first actual question besides the normal would be like, what are your goals and like visions and like what services do you need to, um, cause we offer other things besides DJ. What is going on with my mic? <laughs> I'm watching it over there. The yeah. It's going down, down, down out. volume. <laughs> hey, let's just use this one together. <laughs> but yeah, I would say just the, the normal questions and just kind of what, what is your goal and vision of the wedding? When you when you're talking to people and asking it, their goal and vision, do you go through? And again, I know you guys do more than this, JJ. You guys do decor. You guys do a bunch of stuff, add-ons. Uh, do you start going through that and start going through everything in your inventory and saying, "Hey, you know, we could do centerpieces. We can do." I know you guys have like a little chandelier and stuff like that. And you, do you start going through that, or do you ask what their vision is and then try and fit in what you do into their vision? Um. A little bit of both, I guess, because um, sometimes people come to us and they don't know what they want. They don't know what they need. And then other times they're like, oh, well, we we have everything. We just need decor. Or we just need a DJ. So it kind of just depends. Um, so, I mean, yeah, of course, we try to suggest them towards things, but 
yeah. We, I mean, at it, first, at least we try to stick. Like if they came to us for just DJ, I'm gonna probably just stick to try to selling them DJ because uh, a lot of times they come back later, and I I can push that later down the road, especially during the planning. Like, oh yeah, a donut wall would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if they didn't come to me for that, I don't try to push it just because I I don't want to, I guess, scare them away right away. They you know they came for DJ services, not centerpieces. <laughs> Okay, this this is a fat guy question. Being a fat guy in Lincoln Donuts, where do you guys get your donuts at over there in Indiana? Where's your where's your go to place? Ooh, we don't supply them, but I always tell people. Um, oh, I'm forgetting the name. Besides Rise and Roll, um, Parlor Parlor Donuts, pretty good. Um, and then there's there's one out in Dyer. I can't think of the name, but uh, a lot of donuts actually don't work on it. To be completely honest, like really with frost frosting and like an outdoor barn wedding, they last about five minutes and they're just dripping everywhere. You need a like the old fashioned type of donut or something like that. I keep telling people to do pretzels. No one's done pretzels. So. <laughs> I could tell you that um, one of the donut places that we've been to uh, I actually went there because they also do comic books too. Crenshaw thirteen in uh, what is it? Uh... So yep, where we live in Crown Point. Oh, it's they closed. closed down, oh, really? It's closed, permanently yeah. closed. Yeah. Crown Point. The oh man, passed. the owner passed away. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it's they had really good donuts. Oh, um, like, I still uh, got marks on my. I'm my. I'm like I gotta go back there. I haven't been been there in a little bit, but like they had. Oh wow. They were a good one. So yeah. That, that stinks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's been a little while since like I've been over there. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago actually. Oh, well, um, since. Since the, since 2020, you know, everything is a little slow and getting back to normal, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that's that's yeah. the thing. But, yeah, oh, man, the comic books, yeah, they, they had cool comic books there, too. Mm -hmm. it was, yeah, that it that, was that, cool. that totally stinks. Yeah, I just, just clicked on uh, to see what town it was and because it marked on my, my apps and it's like it's permanently closed. I'm like, permanently closed? What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> man. Because, so yeah, their donuts were really good. <laughs> they had yeah. really different, like, really uh cool you know they were on uh, i saw them on chicago's best for donuts mm -hmm. they had an episode on chicago's best and i'm like ah okay so you know fat guy hop in the vehicle mm -hmm. with uh my boss and let's hey let's let's go try this donut place over in indiana and make it a you know fun day and that's the thing is that you know you're going to do stuff you know go have fun enjoy yourself uh but you know that's that's one of the crucial things is knowing where to get things at. And the reason why I picked donuts, not because I like donuts, but it gives an example, but also as a business owner and as a DJ, knowing what to get, where to get stuff from. If, if a customer comes to you and asks, hey, I'm looking for this. Even though it's something you don't do, you can at least say, hey, you know what? Uh, oh, you need a caterer. Oh, you know what? Who's an awesome caterer? And I know them and they have great stuff. Oh, I, I, want, a, I, want, I want a hot dog truck. Oh, hey, you know what? My friend, which I do have a friend, Rocco at uh, at Sporties, he does have a food truck and he does events. Like, oh hey, Rocco at Sporties, get a hold of him. You want a late night, you know, hot dog truck outside? He'll come to you. You talk to him. You know, you work it out with him. But the thing is that you know, it's not only a place that I know and I've gone to, and I I love his products, but also it's nice to have that be that resource for your customers, especially when they're coming early on, like to come to you, the two of you or out with the rest of us with these ideas. And when you're sitting there and you're a resource for them, more and more planning to get into, they ask more and more questions and you can help them with that. And that's, that's another key thing with selling. Uh, I'm going to go next to, uh, I'm actually go to Dwayne in Ohio. Uh, my other uh, Ohio DJ, <laughs> uh, Dwayne, What's one of the first questions you ask your clients when they come to you and say, hey, Dwayne, we want to hire you for uh, your services for whatever it is, wedding, party, whatever it is. What's the first few questions you ask? First, um, my big thing is not only the um, date, but the distance, the traveling distance, so the location. Um, and then the next thing would be like what their vision is. And once I can kind of like get that, I can kind of like gauge of um, what um, I might have to bring or be involved in that situation. Then I'll point them to my um, questionnaire so it, so I can get some more answers from them. 
and then move on from there. Like, what is their music taste? What do they want me to do? Do they want me to just play background music? Are they going to dance or all that? So I can figure out what kind of equipment to bring. And if I notice that um, there are small details that make their event better, then they'll offer those services that um, I do to help them with that. And so that's basically it. And that's, that's, you know, again, that's very important information. And again, distance, you know, Ohio, like, you know, any other Midwestern state, um, you have some distance sometimes between uh, cities or villages or towns, you know, whatever the, the, they, the government sub-entity they want to call themselves. And, you know, perfect example is like uh, Taylor and Jordan in Indiana, they're not far from me, but it's not easy to get to all the time, especially with the tollway. If it's really crowded going into Indiana, which a lot of times it is, uh, you know, it may take a while to get there. So that's one of the things also is a crucial thing. When is it? What time is it? And how far it is, you know, distance. And that's that's a huge thing. Like I said it before, if you're asking for some of the DJ, let's say I get a hold of Mr. Mr. Dixon, and I say, hey, you know, I want you to DJ here in my town. It may not be financially feasible for him because it's so far of a distance, fuel, time, and, you know, everything else. Plus also wear and tear in a vehicle. Is he going to have to stay a hotel and so forth? If it was, you know, Taylor and Jordan, they're much closer. Or if it, even it's Billy, he may, he may say I'm a little bit closer than Dwayne. Or... If it's uh, DJ Brentley, you know, he's coming from, you know, up in Wisconsin, but he may be closer to get to that area in, in Rockford, let's say, than it would be for Dwayne to get there. So it, it's one of the things, knowing your geographic location, kind of an idea, hey, anything more than a two-hour ride away, you know, uh, within 80 miles or whatever, uh, you kind of want to have that geo geographic location locked down that you know, hey, if someone's asking me to go to... Uh, Memphis, Tennessee, I have no problem with that, but I'm going to have to charge an extra fee. And what does that fee incur? Okay, gas, maintenance, wear and tear in the vehicle, you know, all the fun stuff that you include in that and hotel, food, and so forth and so on. And if someone wants to pay you for that, hey, God bless and not a problem. So uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Taylor and Jordan real quick and ask uh, a follow-up question for them. When you talk to a client, your initial talk to the client, is it a one hour sit down with a meeting with the customer or is it, you know, a half hour? How long do you usually try to do a, the first meeting for? Oh, like after they're already booked or before? Well, no, the, the first meeting, first, first time talking to them, either they come into your office or they do That's a Zoom it. chat. Um, It's usually between 30 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, sometimes you get the people that like to talk and sometimes you get the, the longer the meeting, the more likely we are. We're booking. I feel like, yeah, we probably <laughs> it's long because we're just BSing and yeah, just and talking. That, but... that, that's, that's one of the things too, with the meeting, you kind of get your feelers out. You can kind of tell it's one of the things that Trace and I talk about when we talk, we do most of our meetings or initial meetings on zoom. This way we're not traveling anywhere. It's a little easier. Um, that's a, hey, meet me at Starbucks, meet you there. We don't have an office. You know, this is, again, this is an extra room in my house. It is a bedroom, but it's an office and it's treadmill behind me. And, you know, we got, you know, my office on this half. And it's one of the things I don't have an office, office like, you know, again, Taylor and Jordan have. So having a, you know, going to Starbucks, or whatever, sometimes it can be a pain and doing a Zoom chat. When we get done, it's usually about an hour for us, Tracy and I. And we always say, okay, we, we see how long it is, how people pay attention and so forth. And we kind of get an idea of would they hire us or not. And we always hope our clients always pick us. But sometimes maybe after talking to us, they don't feel we're a good fit. And that's not a problem. There's plenty of other DJs out there that may fit them better. You know, they may meet, you know, Taylor and Jordan and say, hey, you know what? They work better because they do this, this, and this, and this versus Buddy and Tracy don't. And that's fine and great, not a problem. And if they said, hey, you know what, you don't fit me, but do you have a DJ that does that speaks Polish fluently? Or do you have a DJ that does this or does that? I if I know someone, I'll point them to that DJ. And that's that's a great thing of having, you know, a network of friends also helps as well. Uh Billy, I'm gonna go to you. And again, I know you're new to this, but you've done plenty of booking with 
clients, what is the first few questions you ask or first question you ask a client after they say, hey, Billy, I want to hire you as a DJ for whatever the event is on such and such date. What do you follow up with? What's your first questions you try to ask a, qu a customer? I think, honestly, to start off with the radius of where it's actually located, because if it's out of my region where I want to be, that kind of determines if I'll take it or not, I guess. I don't know. I don't want to sound bad that way, but usually in my region, we're usually about a lot of our venues here are like about 40, 45 minutes for a good venue, a good wedding venue. Um, there is a couple here in town. Uh, but yeah, that's the first initial thing I would say is just where is it located? Um, and then kind of going to the basics after that. Uh, what are you looking for? Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, just going into that more details, depending on if I'm going to be the right set for them. I feel like that should be in the first couple questions. Am I going to be a good fit for you? Um, have you seen my work? Have you seen my videos? Uh, for example, like I have a couple this weekend at a meeting and she's like, yeah, she's like, yeah, I saw you perform live. She's like, you were fully recommended from so-and-so. She's like, I want to book you. She's like, I don't want anybody else, you know? So that kind of, you know, it just that that vibe to start. Um, I would say I don't really like to go into pricing right off the riff, um, but I do just like to see what the vibe is and see if I can be the right fit. Or, if, for example, as you said, saying, "Hey, can I forward you on to somebody else who I know might be a better fit for you?" So you know, one other thing also, be, uh, and this is how we do our pricing. We base some of our pricing upon the amount of people. When you have an intimate wedding at like, you know, 60, 70, 80 people or less, we charge a smaller fee than a wedding that's 150 because less people, smaller sound system, usually less work, usually less requests. When you start getting the bigger weddings at 200, 300 person way, we charge extra because depending on the room, you may have to run additional speakers, additional sound. And it's things like that. We, that's one of the questions we ask is how many people pricing, you know, talking about pricing. I never want to lead with pricing. If people are asking, what is your price? Then that's all they care about. And again, I understand that's an important thing for clients to understand. Hey, I have a budget of X, Y, Z. But one of the things also that we do is make sure our pricing is on our website. So we can always point to when we talk to clients, Hey, our prices are on our website. You can go right to our website. We don't hide anything. It's one of the things that we feel it's best for us because this way also the person who's looking for a inexpensive DJ, which again, there's nothing wrong with that, but they may want someone who is cheaper because they don't want as much or they, they just they, they feel that, that, you know, they want certain things. They can look at us and say, okay, hey, you want your, your starting price is more than I want to pay. I'm going to look for someone else. Hey, God bless. No problem will go on. But the one thing is that, yeah, never, I never want thought about leading off with pricing and you're, I totally agree with you, Billy there, right there. I, I wouldn't start anything with uh first thing first. Hey, by the way, I'm this much an hour. How are you doing? No, that's that, that right there would not be uh, a great way to start a conversation. Um, I'm going to actually go over to South Carolina, the cool thing who is in his office right now at the uh, cool thing, entertainment command center, who is a, uh, <laughs> He's got your, he's got his maps up, looking out, you know, deciding where he's going to take over in uh, South Carolina. There, what what cities he's going to conquer, and what event he's going to conquer there. <laughs> so, uh, Hunter, what's yeah. one of the first questions you ask people? They they come to you and say, Hunter, you know, I you know I want you to DJ, whatever. It could be a birthday party, it could be a wedding, it could be whatever. On this date, they give you the date, they give you what the event is. What is the next question you ask them? to kind of get the ball rolling? Well, usually I don't really ask questions. I just let them ask the questions and I answer as much as I can. First thing you go in and ask about pricing, how much do you charge the DJ? And they said, okay, cool. I want you to DJ this place that, you know, that event, that event, you know, this event, event, that event. And the only question I really ask is the music because they have different tastes in music. Other than that, then everything works out smoothly. 
Do you, uh, when you're talking to people back and forth, you know, you're you explain to them what your services and what you offer. Um, um, well, do you... I never really ask that. You know, all you all I do is like the DJ service, and they say I'm looking for a DJ, and I'm like, sure, and that's how they get booked. Do you do you have a distance how far you'll go to DJ? Because I know that you know you uh, you have your uh, your your DJ team you go with to an event. Uh, is there a distance like you know? Do you go within twenty miles of of your office? You go within thirty miles of your office, or do you say, hey, you know, that's if I said, hey, I want you to DJ in, let's say Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. I'm sure you probably say it's too far away, but if it was you know basically on you know not far from you, would you say that's okay, or do you, is there a distance limit you'd go to? Well, I never really get asked to DJ outside of South Carolina. Then yeah, I. Always say no. It's a hard pass. It's too far of a distance. Because I know I got asked to DJ um, up in the mountains somewhere. I say no. It's too far. And that's actually in in North Carolina at one time, and I said no. It's too far. Any uh, I, I yeah. I usually stay within the state of South Carolina because I know I went to Darlington to, to DJ at a church a couple of times for a Latin festival. And of course, the youth lock in a couple of times. So yeah, I've been back and forth to Darlington. So I usually go around no more than an hour or two, depending on the distance between one city to one, yeah, one city to another. Okay. But and usually, this... yeah, usually the gigs in South in Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach and Garden City and all them are pretty close by because I don't okay. have that. I don't have that far to drive. Okay. Yeah. And again, you know, the area of, you know, your area better than I do. And, you know, I, I don't know all the cities and towns and villages and whatnot around you. And that's the important thing is that, you know, what's around you again, Billy knows that the, the cities around him and where his part of Ohio, he's like Western Ohio, right? You're like central Western Ohio. And then, you know, Dwayne is up Northern Ohio so, you yeah. know, and then uh, Kevin, who who usually in the chat, he's in, he's like near Columbus, so he's central Ohio. Uh, everybody's got different areas, but it's kind of, you, you need to know the areas fairly well because you need to understand where the distance is, you know. Uh, Adrian E. said, I would go anywhere to DJ if it's within a five-hour or so drive. Client would pay extra fee plus hotel stay. Um Oh, you, you're North Central? Uh, I'd still say Central, oh. you know, Columbus area. I know you're a little north of there, but I would say the Columbus area, you're still good in uh, as far as Kevin. But uh, Adrian, you drive within five hours? That, that's that's a pretty good drive because uh, five hours uh, from where you're at, you could be in Ohio. So you could uh, meet up with uh, Billy and DJ with Billy for five hours. <laughs> Uh, you can, uh, uh, with a Dayton, Ohio, I think it's, uh, about five hours to Dayton from, uh, from where you're at in the South suburbs. So, you know, yeah. you're right there, but any end, you can go right up on there and go right across take 65 right South. Um, so I'm going to go to, uh, Matt in a beautiful state of California. What about you? When you talk to a client and you're, you're, and they come to you and say, Hey Matt, we want you to DJ, whatever the event is, here's the date. What's the next questions you follow up with with your clients? Um, well, I ask, uh, what ideally are you looking for in your wedding DJ? Um, are you interested in any extras? Like, uh, you know, I, I kind of make it dumbed down because, you know, they're not going to know exactly what extras. So I just kind of say, you know, are you looking for something more simple? Are you looking for something more on the side of, you know, uh, lighting, production, et cetera? Uh, but I also know where they come from. So I have a different template that I send if it's from Instagram versus a referral versus a, um, you know, a venue we've worked at before. If it's a venue we've worked at, I'll put a, a YouTube link uh, or an Instagram video or a reel or something. Um, but like, I always leave the ball in their court. Like I ask, oh, you know, what are you interested in this, this, this? And then I'll say, you know, I'd be happy to send packages and pricing upon hearing back. So then I have a 99% response rate on that almost a hundred. I almost absolutely never don't get a response. Um, and then, you know, I usually kind of take the conversation from there. Um, I never want to meet with a couple. I hate doing that. That is a waste of my time. Um, I don't want to hop on a phone call. I don't want to meet them in person. 
Like if you don't like my portfolio shows everything I do. There's tons of videos, pictures, all that stuff. If we're like later in the process and you want a, a phone call before you like sign a contract, sure. But like, I'm not, I'm the last person to suggest a meeting or a call or anything like that. Like I no. Um, so that's just how I do it. I, I book most of my weddings in two or three emails. That's it. Like I, I send that email. They send back. I send them our pricing. They say, Oh, we'll discuss it. We'll get back to you two days later. We'd like to go with this package. What's the next steps? Contract sent done. Don't talk to you again until a month out from the wedding. That's it. Um, that's how I do it. I mean, I've got 82 weddings this year and almost all of them have been booked that way. So it works for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know. Uh, that's pretty, pretty much how it goes. <laughs> well, and, and everyone, everyone does things differently. And this is one thing, you know, how Matt does his business and how everyone does their business. Everybody does things differently. And that's, that's an interesting thing because, some people are more hands-on. Some people were very much like Matt, a little bit more, hey, you know what? Here's here here's the information. Here's my stuff. Uh, here's what I'm about. And, you know, get the ball rolling and get it going, get a contract to him right away. I, I, and it, I it, it, it's interesting. Yeah. And I sometimes like the phone call if it's like complex or, for example, if they like found me through, like I had one that found me through Instagram. They listed a whole bunch of stuff that they were interested in. And like, you know, I suggested like they didn't care what the price was. I could have thrown any price at them. They wanted me 100%. So like in that sense, that was an easy one to hop on a phone call to discuss exactly what they wanted because like they already had an idea. But like I'm the last person. I'm not good at a whole phone sales pitch. Like I am terrible at that. But like if you already have we've had some conversation and then you want to hop on a call, like I'm happy to answer any questions, elaborate further. And then once again, I don't do business with people that don't have iPhones. So once I have them on a call and we're talking over stuff, oh, yeah, you know, what are your photo booth backdrops? Oh, cool. Let me just text it to you right now. So they have it texted in front of their face right on the phone call uh, or they're like, oh, you know what? What options do we have for the the prints for the photo booth? And I'll send them a link, like I said last week, to the photo booth uh, website or uh, you know, whatever. Or if like they haven't gotten the pricing, that's another good one. Once they're on the phone with you and you drop pricing there, they're not just going to ghost you. So um, that's that's the other part of it is like, but but I've had plenty of clients where they don't want to hop on a phone call with you just to get pricing. They want the pricing to see if you're even within their budget. And then maybe they'll talk about a phone call. So um, I, I tried it that way for a couple of weeks of like, oh yeah, book a consultation. We'll go over pricing and everything. And it it was disastrous. So uh, that doesn't work for me, but, um, yeah, I like, I like my system. I like my method and I always text them after getting a lead just because like some people are better with texting versus, uh, uh, email. And sometimes our emails go to spam. If it's like a Gmail, uh, like a wedding Gmail account, they're already getting a ton of spam emails. So it just thinks, Oh, entertainment that's spam. So I text them to say, Oh, just making sure you got it. And then that way, like I pin that, that's my CRM. That's how I manage my customers. So, um, that's how I do it. And that's, that's an important thing is that again, everyone does different things. That's why I asked this question, because maybe it will get you thinking of how you approach things and, and do your business. And maybe there's a better way of doing something. It doesn't mean you have to do it the way that we're saying to do it. We're just saying, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And that's, that's one of the key uh, things here. It's, it's, we always offer suggestions. You know, we're telling you how successful our business is and how we do things. It doesn't mean you have to do it the same way we're doing it. Just means that, Hey, you know what? This is how I do it. I'm going to go to uh, Wisconsin this time and go up to uh, DJ Brentley, who uh, has me very successful up there in uh, lacrosse. And uh, I haven't seen you on blue cam uh, Not for yet. a bit. Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't seen. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen, never seen you on it, but I haven't seen La, Lacrosse on for a little bit. I've seen a uh, few other places uh, on yeah. Blue Cam lately, but not uh, Lacrosse. So I think maybe uh, you guys are behaving up there, or it's not getting crazy up there. School's out of session. UWL summer school doesn't start for another week or so, so it's really chill. And there was like a ten day period where. Uh, they kick all the kids out of the off-campus housing to, you know, assess the apartment, the damage, and see how much money they can make, you know, for cleaning and all that after the kids move out. So they get like 10 days to do that. 
And then the kids come back on June 1st to sign their leases for the next year. So these last few weeks have just been God awful and boring and part and parcel. I've been, you know, doing the wedding thing more. So it makes it a little bit more tolerable, I guess. I don't know. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, we talk about blue, uh, code blue cam on YouTube. Uh, they have a lot of great, uh, police body cam footage, especially from the city of La Crosse in Wisconsin. Uh, that seems to be their, their, uh, their bucket. They go to a lot, uh, a lot of crazy things happen in uh, Brentley's uh, town. Uh, Brentley's, originally from, up here. Brentley's originally from uh, Chicago, like myself, and uh, he is a still a Chicago, and you know he does root for the wrong uh, football team. Uh, we'll forgive him for that, but um, we will uh, one hopefully, hopefully one day he'll get his uh, get his bearings right and go back to being a Bears fan. And then uh, I know oh, he's no. a Cubs fan. I, I've never been a Bears fan. Oh uh, well, you maybe. Was- Maybe we'll baptize you, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. We'll baptize you as a Bears fan. <laughs> no, not happening. Uh, well, my give, some, give, give me some old style. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, old style, yes, because, you know, Harry Carey Car- used to do the old style thing. Then he did the Bud thing. They went back to the old style thing. And old style's got the brewery back here on the cross. So all about it. But, yeah, you know, with things, you know, you know, when couples, you know, first contact me, luckily because my pricing is on my website and every one of my packages is completely laid out, we don't, that pricing conversation almost never comes up like, what do you charge? And the few times I get that, I'm going to turn that question right back around. What do you want from your DJ? What are you looking for? Is the first thing I'll come back with. I'm not even, you know, trying to find out where their venue is at on that first question. My first, you know, like, and I will put this like I, you know, tell my DJs, just like when you're starting your dance floor, it's kind of like dating. Your first, you know, few songs, you're walking on eggshells, being very proper, being careful, paying attention to what you're doing. So by the end of the night, you're, you know, doing the thing. And I'll put that into that same perspective with my sales process, so to speak. I'm walking on eggshells, but I don't want, I don't necessarily want to book every wedding that comes my way. So I want to pull everything out of them from what kind of, you know, what vibe and aesthetic they're looking for, which one of my higher end, what do you want? The black setup, the white setup, or do you want the TV booth? Those are the conversations I'm going right at to get an idea of their vision. And then the next thing I'll go is into their musical tastes. And sometimes I might even flip that because up in the cross and, you know, a lot of the communities here, even going, take out Madison, Milwaukee out of the picture. And in Wisconsin, you need to play a lot of country. And and so with that, I'm trying to weasel out. Do you want to, do you like a lot of country? Do you like a lot of this? And as soon as they say, we want mostly country at our wedding, stop, red flag, I'm out. So I am trying to get through every one of those possible limitations like you know that kind of put a you know snub what every aspect of a dj can do with his mix along with trying to make sure that i'm the right dj mc and making sure that we are the right fit before we even really get into talking about my packages and prices and fully and when it comes you like you're saying people are looking for venue i'm a little bit more reckless and not like i've Booked a wedding in Southern Illinois, uh, just outside of Southern Illinois um, for next year. And the price they're paying me is, un- they want me, they saw me at a wedding up here. I'm like, well, it's going to, you're going to pay for two days, period. So basically it's a $10,000 deal for me that I'm driving down. I'm going to, and obviously being me, I'm going to pick up a club gig in Chicago on the night before the wedding and then finish the rest of the drive and get to the wedding the next day. And probably pick something in Chicago up on the way back. So even though technically I'm losing one full wedding day, I can make up that plus my travel. So when it comes to going somewhere, I don't care where they are as long as I can get there within a day or two. And they're willing to pay for what I'm, you know, hotels. And I think I, I think I told them I wanted, you know, because I'm losing a day's wedding, that's, you know, like 2,500 bucks out the gate. It's going to cost me. And so it was like $4,000 in travel. And then they want Sparks, photo booth, 
And by that time, I'll have my new Portman's, those fancy lights I just bought. So I'm like, would you want these? And this is the upsell on that. And they're like, we'll take all that. And like Matt said a little while ago, they wanted me and I could have charged them whatever I wanted. But I want to do that within reason because I didn't necessarily want to blow a big chunk of change like that. And so when it comes to travel, I'll go just about anywhere, honestly. And there's another couple that wanted me to go to Denver. And this is the new avenue. That, that's why I also went to tap Mitch Taylor's brain a little while ago about doing more weddings that are higher ticket and not in my area. As long as they fit what I want, I'm doing. And that's kind of my new whole kit and caboodle thought process of only doing the really, like Matt setups are all phenomenal and doing nothing but that and only offering that kind of, as I was uh, elevated DJ's experience. And that's, that's one of the things, and you know, even I may tease you a little bit, you know, with how times your pictures looks like you have a cape behind you, like Superman. Uh, and if, by the way, uh, you said before uh, your, um, well, hey, what's, what's up, uh, uh, Aaron the DJ? Um, like you said before, the the light, that pinky suit you were wearing one time? Yeah. yeah it does look cool on you. It looks good on you. I love really that suit. Yeah. Yeah, it looked really good. Yeah. When figure, you know, like if you ever seen the Facebook page of the Dapper DJ, if you're selling these, you know, like Matt and I are selling these elaborate, sexy setups, so to speak, you have to also dress and look the part. Uh, you know, and I won't lie, since I've donned the suits all the time, it has definitely helped as an MC because people are taking you me far. Like I say something, oh, it's the guy in the suit. I better get, I better pay attention. And so it helps command the crowd to do what you want. If you're just some, you know, like if you're wearing a polo and a pair of jeans, no one is going to, they're not going to take you seriously because you're not taking that couple's day seriously. Uh, Gene, so, I would never, I would never would say, unless it's again, it's a total, total country barn wedding. That's what they want you to wear. That's one thing, but oh yeah, polo and jeans. No, it's, it's dress pants, polo in it, certain weddings. Cause it, they want really laid back. That's again, that's something the client wants. Okay, fine. Great. Exactly. But dress shirt, you know, dress pants, you know, dressing proper, you know, I dress, I dress based on how much they pay me. They're paying for the full package and they paid the premium rates, they'll get a suit. If they got a deal or a wedding show special, they're not getting a suit. They're getting me with slacks and a long sleeve shirt. That's it. I, I, um, I have no problem, I wanna be, problem wearing a, I like I, to be I, comfortable. I wear a dress shirt and dress pants. No problem. Yeah. I like to it's be comfortable. But, yeah. but Matt, you're not wearing <laughs> like a polo. Yeah. No. Yeah, it says the, no. You're the, coming. The, <laughs> you're stepping up. I have a buddy that uh, for the longest time until this year would wear slacks and a short sleeve like polo to DJ wedding. Uh, and I'm like, that is I'm so good. informal. Like you, you just, it's a wedding. And like, but it I depends told, on the wedding. Some, some clients like you're having an outdoor wedding. They want this really more chill vibe. And again, mm -hmm. that's something you, you talk to the clientele. Yeah. Is that well, what they want? Not, California is a little different than here. So every year is not, a little different. Dress we're not like your client's dress. Yeah, yeah we're not uh, yeah, we're not photographers. Here. We're not video people. We're not coordinators. We can't dress like schlubs. <laughs> yeah, I'll, exactly. throw, I'll but, gladly yeah. throw them under. The, I've seen some just pathetically dressed uh, photographers and video people, and it's just like it's yes, you, they look, look like, they're like, in, like and they're in every sh like they're they're the main in the ceremony, it, walking up and down the aisle in like a Hawaiian shirt or like <laughs> you know sandals and like I've sandals. seen. Just Here, come up to Wisconsin. Off. You're gonna sing. You're gonna sing Crocs and jean shorts out of some of these photographers. God, it's I'm not terrible. kidding. I, 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 I I'm not kidding. Jorts, jorts. <laughs> yeah, I would oh, no. for this to a wedding because especially and, in the summertime when it's hot, it's very. Humid. And again, the, the ball boils down to every area is a little different, and what kind of wedding you're doing. What you're wearing, cool thing. Again, the client has no has no problem when wants that kind of look. That's not a problem. You know, majority of the time, I'm gonna have you know. One of like five different gray shirts, and they wear gray, not black, because the fact that I don't want to look like a server, so I wear a gray shirt because it kind of hides things more. And I wear dress pants, and you know, depending on the venue, you know, I may wear a tie me knot. I don't wear a jacket so like because one, I'm I'm warm most of the time. I'm a fat guy, and then two, you know, the other part of it is that you know I want to look like one of the guests 
that are there. I'm not trying to make a center of attention. I don't want to put a hot, uh, you know, a top hat and have high tail, you know, have tails and say, ladies and gentlemen, like I'm the, you know, leader of the circus. I want to look like I blend into the background and I want to be a background character. And again, wearing a suit and stuff like that, again, that is a background thing. That's not some of these DJs and I've seen them, they get a full tuxedo on and you have everyone wearing you know, it's a Hawaiian themed wedding. They have the like the cool. Not, I'm not talking about the loud Hawaiian shirt, but the cool white Hawaiian shirt that has a nice look to it, or they have a nice you know tropical feel, and they're like relayed back and stuff like that. And you have this guy wearing a tuxedo, and it's like you're not dressed to mirror what the guests are doing. And that's the thing is that dressing proper is an important thing, and every area is different, and that all boils down to the clientele, what the clientele want, and that's talking to your client, asking your totally. client questions. You know, buddy, with that, though, honestly, I have found that price point, and Matt, you probably see this, too, because of the prices and we're charging. With that price point, you have to dress up to the venue you're going to 95% of the time. The venue, yeah. Would, the venue also has it. And I especially, like, make, sorry. you see where I'm at, at like Cargill and Celebrations for, for a predominance of my wedding. I can't go there. I mean, I can. I will roll in looking like I do right now. Well, he's setting up I'm one looking. thing. And... Within an hour of you know showtime, I'm fully changed, the whole nine yards, and fully presentable. So, but I'm not even there. Like one of the a wedding recently, everyone but one member of the family and his wife were dressed to the hilt. And this one, and you could tell the groom was livid at his friend who showed up sleeveless cut, you know, sleeveless shirt, the John Deere hat with the Oakleys upside down on the brim. And it was like, everybody else here is dressed probably better than I was in one of my suits. And you show up like that, dude, you got a problem. And I've seen DJs showing up like that at in celebrations for other in other venues. And I'm just like appalled because they know where they're going and still don't put the effort forth. And again, that knowing your, where it's at, that's just one of the reasons why another reason why asking what the venue is, is important. And you know, again, this is a communication thing with your client as well. If you're the DJ known that you are a DJ, you know, jorts, that you show up with jorts and a t-shirt and sandals, and that's your, that's, that's your yes, I said that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but if you're a DJ jorts and you that, that's your thing, and you show up and you look like you haven't taken a shower in a while and you, you got a big bushy beard, but that's your thing, then God bless, you know, your clients know what they're getting. And if it fits the venue, great. But if you go into a venue, uh, I had a venue uh, a few years ago. Uh, the video is on YouTube of a gig log. Uh, you know, I do usually don't wear a tie, but, you know, I do have a tie with me in case I need to have a tie on. And they're like, well, you have a tie on. I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll get the tie on since I get everything set up. Set everything up, put the tie on. No big deal. I wore a tie when I was in corporate management for many years. So wearing a tie, trust me, I have a lot of nice ties. I always keep a tie with me. And just very, very basic, and, you know, it's no problem. But the thing is that oh, knowing where you're going into and what you're going yourself into is an important thing, and I feel that's very important. How you dress, what you dress, again, you want to dress for success, but also you want to talk to your clientele and see exactly what the venue is. If it's a, you know, a hoedown in a bar and there's a bunch of, you know, bales of hay and everyone's wearing jeans and, you know, cowboy hats and, you know, uh, you know, plaid shirts and you show up wearing a full suit, you're going to stick out versus, you know, showing up that mirrors the guest there and you blend into the background. That's what my thought is. Uh, I'm going to finally go to uh, Tommy. He's actually out on the road right now doing a remote uh, coverage of an important event. Uh, Tommy, <laughs> uh, as a, uh, as a guy who uh, is uh, home from college, but uh, DJs at bars and as well as DJs events, what is your question that you ask people after they tell you, say, hey, Tommy, when will I hire you for such and such an event at such a you know, uh, date? What is the next question you follow up with them? Um, yeah, so since I do a lot of different private events, like I don't do strictly weddings. Um, so if it's an event like that, I like to find out a little bit more information about what necessarily is going on you know i've done some company parties before i've done uh private graduation parties or if it's a wedding i want to get some information on a couple 
And then uh, obviously the venue as well. Uh, like we were all saying, uh, the distance, I like to find out how far I need to travel. Um, I do some traveling weddings. I did a wedding up in Manitowoc, Wisconsin last year. So it was about two and a half hours. Um, if I'm traveling like that for a wedding, um, lodging has to be included in the contract. So they need to either pay for a hotel room or uh, basically put me up somewhere. Um, when it comes to bars or clubs, I've also done some traveling stuff there, but usually uh, I base that around somewhere that I'm going to be traveling. So, for example, when I DJed with uh, Billy C at Dayton, Ohio, I had an Ohio trip planned around the DJ gig that I was booked for. So I already had my lodging and all that figured out. And then I just went on with my um, correspondence with the bar. But yeah, I definitely like to get that information ahead of time. That way you're not getting yourself in too deep with a client. And then all of a sudden they throw something on you like, oh yeah, so we want you to do our wedding, but it's going to be four hours away. Obviously, if it's worth my time to go four hours away and they're able to put me up, then yeah, I'd maybe be willing to do it. But if it's a small 50 person wedding and it's going to be a four hour drive, then I'm probably not going to take that event. So I'd like to just get some additional information prior to and then decide from there if I'm the right choice for that couple. And that's the important that's the important thing is that you know deciding if you're the right fit for someone as well. Uh, a couple other quick things here. Uh first thing first, thank you, Aaron, for stopping by and saying hi. And thank you for the uh for the bits. I appreciate it and subscribing. Uh Aaron says a DJ Salsas, $50 gig, show up in a speedo. <laughs> And then he said, uh, sh uh, suit jacket. Bucks, I'll do it for free. <laughs> 50 out show up for <laughs> Hey, you know, there was a point hey, in that time might be when more. we did have the Speedo show out at a bar that was in West Salem. Uh, it was the same night as we did a wet t shirt contest, and me and one of the bartenders showed up in our Speedos. It was great. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'd be like Homer Simpson showing up in a Speedo. You know, that would not be, that would not look good. Fat man in a Speedo does not look good. That's not a, that's not a good thing. But uh, Aaron, um, Aaron, it says uh, suit jacket, button up long sleeve, every wedding. And he has this, uh, this blue jacket. There's a, a picture of him with this blue jacket. I told him he's got to find that jacket. Uh, it, he looks awesome. He looks like a, uh, he looks like he belongs in a, on a, a movie set. It looks so awesome. Um, and then uh, Kevin in Ohio says, I let the bride and groom choose my level of sophistication of dress. And that's the uh, important thing is that, again, talking to a client, find out what they want, what kind of event they want. I think it's very important. Uh, someone paying for your top dollar package. Yeah, you're going to want to dress for the event. But also the venue dictates that too as well. Because again, there are venues who require tie and jacket for gentlemen and, you know, other things versus show up with jorts and you know, uh, a, a, a Grateful Dead t-shirt and uh, socks and flip-flops. And, and I, I I don't know about you guys. I never get the socks and flip-flops or socks and Crocs. It just, it make, it, I don't know, it just makes my head hurt. But that's beside the point. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna end on that tonight. It's been a it's been a long episode here and a lot of great information. And again, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in, watching, and watching the show. I appreciate everyone here. Billy, good to have you back here again. Uh, as always, I'm glad to see that uh, your schedule finally lined up enough that you can come in here and spend some time with us. And uh, hopefully, we'll get you in here some more episodes, uh, not too distant future. And then also, um, uh, socks and Crocs sound like a song. Yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, I, I got asked, is anyone here? I just want to see a show of hands really quickly. And I think Brantley's going to raise his hand with this one. Uh, Crocs and socks. Sandals and socks. Oh, What's wrong? Oh, I no. wear sandals and socks. Sandals and socks, Crocs and socks. Oh, come Not on. Wedding, you you got to... It has to be slides. If you're going to wear socks and sandals, it has to be slides. You can't be wearing the thong sandals. The socks. Oh, <laughs> come on. Oh, yeah. No, oh, socks and sandals. Wear shoes. <laughs> no. Oh, you just have years. sexy feet, buddy. <laughs> you well, not anymore. Now, now that one of them got burned off, remember? That that one doesn't look so sexy anymore. But the right one looks sexy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, were you here? Yeah, when he hurt his foot. Like, he spilled, like, yeah. hot coffee, right? Oh, yeah. Really? yeah. <laughs> uh, see if I can get it on camera. It's, oh, uh, 
got Sue. Yeah, Ouch. Got some spots, some spots on there. Foot cam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you guys are watching, put down below foot cam on there when you guys see this in YouTube. There's a foot cam here for you. But uh, we hope that uh, Matt can get through his uh, severe injury and rehab. Make sure oh, you still, uh, buy him a it's coffee still fine. at Starbucks. It, it just, I don't know if the color will go back to normal, but it's fine. It will. It will. <laughs> It's a it's a burn. It will it will go. It will it will heal. But uh, yes, a socks and Crocs sound like a song or a band that could be like a a nineties grunge band. <laughs> socks and Crocs. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> with that said, and the thought of uh, Matt's uh, poor burnt foot in my mind, <laughs> we're gonna say good night to everyone. And tonight we're gonna have uh, Mr. Dixon take us out tonight. Uh, Mr. Dixon, will you do the honor, sir? Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you next week. Good night, everyone.